afternoon to all and congratulations for the, we might say, the revival and the, we might say, the restoration of the church no, in Loon, built by the Augustinian Recollects. No? So allow me, before anything else, allow me to clarify some nomenclature because the lay people, even lay historians, are not so familiar with religious nomenclatures in Philippine church history. Unang unang nomenclature po, correction po, ha, I repeat, the Jesuits are not friars. There were, four, there were five religious groups, no, congregations who came to the Philippines, four of them belonging to the friar orders, namely the Augustinians, 1565, the Franciscans, 1578, the Dominicans, 1587, and the Recoletos, Augustinian Recoletos, or Recoletos for short, please call us Recoletos, in 1606. The third group who arrived in 1581 were the Jesuits. They are not present tense, but they are not friars. They belong today, as we classify them today, as Society of Apostolic Life, like the SPD, CICN, etc. Second nomenclature that we have to be clarified here. No? The patroness of Loon, Our Lady of Casila, no? and you call it no? Our Lady of the Scepter. No? Actually, the Lady of the Scepter does not exist in our religious, no, we might say, nomenclature in the devotion of, uh, of, our, of the Blessed Mother. Actually, the image of the Blessed Mother holding the Scepter what is actually Nuestra Señora de You read the book of Esther, when, King, when Esther entered the chamber, of King Ahasuerus of Persia, no? and remember she was not called upon by the king, she would be punished, no? and upon seeing the queen, no, the king extended his scepter to Queen Esther. She is being forgiven for her, we might say, there is a symbol of mercy, extending to the sinner. Okay, so clear that po tayo dyan. Now let's go to this message, to the, to the, this message that I'm going to give about the history of the Recoletos in Bohol in general. No? In 1596, no, the first group no, to evangelize Bohol Island were the Jesuits, the, the So the Jesuits between 1596 and 1768 founded nine missions no? in Bohol. You don't call it, we don't call it parishes, no? because the, 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 the Jesuits avoided the use of parishes because they were not allowed to hold or to administer parishes. They would, they would call it doctrinas. That's the terminology that they are using instead of parishes. Because in their constitution, they were prohibited to, to administer parishes, but they used the word doctrina. Okay? So what were these, we might say, doctrinas, which they established? Hagna, Loay, Lobok, Maklayon, Dawis, Tagbilaran, Maribohok, Loon, and Inabangan, which now Inabanga. Okay? So... When the record, when the recollects came in in 76, remember in 1768 the Jesuits were expelled by the, from all Spanish territory. The decree was issued in 1767 by King Charles III, but the decree arrived a year later in the Philippines. No, that is the expulsion, not suppression. Again, clarification: the 1767, the 1767 decree of King Charles is just expulsion. They were expelled from all Spanish colonies and they, have, they would be deported to the papal states no, in Rome. No? The suppression came later on no? okay, by Pope Clement XIV. Now let's continue. No? When they were expelled, no, again in the same, we might say, order, 
somebody had to take their place and the Recoletos were chosen. So the Recoletos were taken aback because they were, uh, no, they were surprised because they, 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 the, 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 uh, the, the colonial government was, were, was asking no, eight, nine Recolets to take over the nine doctrinas no, founded by the Jesuits. At that time, they could only afford eight. No? Eight. Eight. No, the, the, the ninth one came later on, according to my research. No? According to my research. But however, the eight, out of the eight, no, one died. He was uh, assigned in Mobo in Masbate because he, when, the, when his assignment came in, he, the assignment which would report him to become the parish priest of Inabanga arrived no, two days, uh, two months when he was already dead in Masbate. So they have to look for replacements. So one of the inherit one of the problems that the record inherited from the Jesuits, the former evangelizers of Bohol, was that the Gohoy Rebellion. So please do not accuse the friars as they were the ones who caused the Dagohoy Rebellion. It was the friars, the Recoletos, who became peace feelers between the rebels and the colonial government. And many of the towns founded by the Recoletos, actually there are 28 towns between 1768 and 1922 that the Recoletos founded in the island. No? And many of the, these towns were settlements no, for those rebels who surrendered peacefully. So the friars were the ones who acted as peace feelers between the Gohoy and the colonial government. So do not accuse the friars that we were the ones who caused the Gohoy to rebel. Actually, it was the, a Jesuit priest of Inabanga. Okay, so what are the three tasks that the recollects know when they submitted themselves to the royal order. What were the three main tasks? Of course, no? number one, to pacify the rebels. Number two, to improve what the Jesuits left, no? they received from the Jesuits, including the churches. Because when the, after the, the earthquake, of the, the earthquake no? the uh, researchers from the National Historical Commission of the King, researchers came and I presented them the causes to tablets of all the parishes of Bohol. And they discovered that between 1768 and the 1890s, there were already tremors that Bohol was experiencing. And many of the churches built by the Jesuits no, were weak. It, has to be re, it had to be reinforced. So some of the churches that were in, in built by, by the Jesuits had to be reinforced by by adding buttresses in order to the, in order for the wall to be sustained during the tremors. So actually, the Recoletos were the ones who improved what the Jesuit had started in Bohol, no? including that of Baclayon Church. No? It was reinforced. No? That's why when the Recoletos left in 1937, many of these churches did not suffer we might say the tremors because they were well maintained using the materials that were supposed to be used in the sustainability of the structure of all churches in Bohol. So another thing that we have to be in mind of that the Recoletos now were also has this pastoral solicitude of, of, to the people. They never forced the Boholanos to build the church. Rather, I would say based on our researches that all churches in the Philippines were built out of love, not by forced labor. Forced labor is a myth created by one governor general, Das Marinas, who were against the Agustinians, who were missionaries in the Ilocos region. And he created this myth, which was applied to all churches. And this is, this is not true. No? So... The new mission no, of the Recoletos from 1768 gave the Recoletos new pastoral perspective. No? And one of the things that the Recoletos did is to create a self-sustaining community for each no, doctrina in Bohol. For example, many of the, of the Recoletos left good marks, no? like Father Mariano Gutierrez of Hagna. No? In other words, in order to maintain a parish in a town, the economic aspect is never neglected because the economy of the town sustains the parish and the parish priest. 
no? That's why the regulators are pastors in, no? In the in the economic aspects of the Boholano people. Remember, the Manila paper was not invented. The Manila paper, which we know, that was invented, was created in Hagna Bohol by Father Mariano Gutierrez. So industries, which we call vocational uh, uh, work today, the in were initiated in each town in Bohol. Now, these 28 towns, no, many of them no, were established. No? The, the 26 town before the, 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 the before the start of the Philippine before the Philippine Revolution. However, because of the Philippine Revolution, the recollectors had to abandon Bohol because of the political situation. No? 50 recollects were assigned in Bohol at that time, and they were told to evacuate because of the persecution that would be raised against them by the Filipino revolutionaries. No? So in other words, no, there was a five-year, seven-month hiatus of recollector presence in Bohol. So when the, the American government took over the Philippines in, 15, in, in, in 1898, no? when the Treaty of Paris, of Paris was signed on December 10, 1898, and the implementation of Pope Leo XIII, Que Mari Sinico, that the, the friars can only return to the parishes if the people would petition. So who was the, what was the first town in Bohol? To petition the Bishop of Cebu, an America, he was a Bishop, not Thomas Henry. They were the first town with a letter signed by all no, parishioners, headed by the, by the alcalde, petitioning Bishop Thomas Henry to allow their pastor, Recoleto, to return to Anda. That was in, we might say, no, 1904. The bishop wrote the provincial in Andapur asking for a recoleto to go to Anda. That was, and he was appointed there. Fray Calixto Gaspar Sardana, he arrived in May 1904. So after that, no, the next bishop, Bishop Juan Gorordo, no, again assigned, no, returned some parishes to the recollects in Bol. And what were, were, what were they from 1904 to 1937? They were, we might say, Mabini, Valencia, Candihay, Clarín, Duero, and Gindulma. Between 1930 and 1936, the parishes of Candihay, Gindulma, and Clarín, and Mabini were still under the care of the Augustinian records. So what were the two last towns and parishes founded by the record during the American regime? They were Mabini in 1905 and Clarín in 1930. 22. So these were the two last towns and parishes established by the, during the American regime. So by 1937, the Recollect Provincial and the Council decided to surrender all their parishes in Bohol to the diocese, to the Archdiocese of Cebu. Remember the Archdiocese of Cebu? The Diocese of Cebu was raised into an Archdiocese in 1934. So, and many dioceses were so the Recoletos left Bohol. The Agustinian Recoletos continued the Recoleto presence in Bohol because of their three important schools in Gindulman, Hagna, and Talibon. And many of the, their students no, entered the the different congregation entered the, the clerical life and even joined the Recoletos. And thanks to the contributions of Choral, no, we might say the formation of the Bohol, that this, the, one of the most beautiful effects is that Bohol no, has now two dioceses, the Diocese of Takbilaran and the Diocese of Talibon. These are evident signs of the how the Recoletos was a, were able to inculcate the religious and cultural and even economic, we may say, consciousness among the Boholanos. And because of this, no, even though the Recoletos are no longer there, no, many 
Boholanos. Thanks to the Agustin Recollect sisters, join us. In other words, no, no, in Spanish, con amor, amor si paga. Love pays with love. And many of this love were expressed by becoming priests and many of the Boholanos joined the Agustinian Recollects. Thank you. The Recollects were a group of Augustinians from Castile province who traced their roots to the chapter of Toledo, Spain on December 5, 1588. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit moved by a special collective charism they expressed their desire to live with renewed fervor the type of consecrated life established by St. Augustine in the church. This is what the constitutions of the Augustinian Recollects say. So Recollect convents for men and women were then set up. It became an autonomous congregation in 1621 under a vicar general. In 1912, they were elevated to the rank of religious order. So from a single province in Augustine to the congregation in 1621, and finally in 1912 to the religious order, rank of religious order. The order of Augustinian Recollects is not the same as the order of St. Augustine or the order of Augustinian Discalce very different. Since 1621, they were autonomous, independent. So you cannot call the Augustinian recollects Augustinian. That is wrong, totally wrong. They were Augustinian in spirituality, in lifestyle, in charism, but they were reformed recollect. The order of Augustinian has 1,000 45 male religious in 2015. They are known to us Recoletos, Discalce Augustinians, Recollect Augustinians, or simply Recollects. Who composed the Augustinian Recollect family? They are active nuns. We have one, Saint Ezekiel Moreno Monastery in Bacolod. The religious sisters. In the Philippines, we have the Agusian Recollect Sisters, founded by Junicia and Cecilia Talampas of Kalumpit Bulacan. The secular Agustinian fraternities all over the Philippines and the youths who belong to the Recollect Agusian youth. So, there are thousands in the Philippines, members of the Augustian Recollect family. And these are the, can we see the slide? These are the Augustinian Recollect members with Father Miguel Miro of Fray Miguel. Then we have also Fray Junicio Selma of Minglanilia Cebu. So we have the Augustinian Recollects there. We have many other members like the missionaries of the Augustinian Recollect missionaries, the mission, the Augustinian Recollects of the Sikh, and the nuns, the Augustinian and contemplative nuns. And the recollects, the Filipino recollects are there also shown in one event in, in. The recollects have done so much for the Philippine culture, for Philippine history. We have here in our slide. Okay, some, some of our Augustian Recollect legacies. We have Virgen del Carmen, El Padre Capitan, the books, 14 books of Juan de la Concepción, the Black Nazarene, Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno, Tatak Recoleto, yun The forts in Romblon, the forts in Taytay, 
da Boholano Legacies, the Church of Talibon, the Cathedral now, Talibon, and the Castillo de San Vicente Ferrer, or they call it now Punta Cruz. We have also universities, the Augustinian University, Augustinian Republic University in Cebu, founded in 1947, USJR, the Cradle of Cebuana Beauties. One, is, one was from Loon, no? Gajiri Ganados from Loon, and who studied at the University of San Jose. The San Sebastian Church, the only old steel church prefabricated in Bench, Belgium, in 1881, it became a basilica. It was the oldest shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It is the oldest shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, brought to the Philippines in 1618. And then we have the world famous bamboo organ. Bamboo organ. Focus on the bamboo, huh? not on the other side, uh, other word. Whenever you find in churches, in cathedrals, in, in forts, these symbols, these logos, be sure that they are Augustinian recollects. Next. Sorry. We have here the main retablo of Hagna Church in Bohol. The Bacalayon Church Missile Experiment, Puerto Princesa Cathedral Lectern, Iba Cathedral Lateral Portal, and of course, the most famous Cuyo Fort Wall, and a church inside the fort, the fort and you have there the logo or the coat of arms. The old coat of arms are the Talavera de Spain. So that was one of the first logo of the Augustinian Recollects. When you study or when you research on the Recollects, you have got to go to this Archivo Histórico Provincial, the Archivo de Fotos de los Agustinos Recoletos, Marsilia, Navarra, Spain. The monastery of the Cistercian Order of Marsilia Navarra, built in 1773 up to 1783, was expropriated by the anti clerical liberal government in, 19, in 1835. It was bought, heirs sold it to the Augustinian Recollects in 1864. The Order's Theology School for Philippine missionaries was established in September 1865. Now it is a white elephant. I'm sorry, uh, there are there is no more community, but the Augustinian records maintain the Archivo Historico Provincial, and this Archivo Historico Provincial has all the. Uh, histories of the recollects in the Philippines, written historical accounts written by friars, by the priests assigned in, because they were mandated by the superior provincial, by the prior provincial to write the history. So we have here the, the more um, uh, archives. We have one in at Chibu Recoleto here at the back where Father Emil Kilatan is our archive administrator. And we have here available almost all the documents found in Archivo Historico Provincial in Marsilia, Navarra, meaning in digitized copies. So we have here, I am now in Bulwagang Recoletos. This is to inform everybody that if you really want to have a serious research 
investigative research and study of the recollection. You have only to come here to the Archivo Recoleto in Bulwagan Recoletos. And you can find almost everything you've always wanted to know about the recollection without going to Spain, without going to Rome. Because here we have all these facilities. We have a museum, we have the St. Augustine Library, we have the Conservation and Restoration Laboratory, and of course the Juan de la Concepcion at Chivo Recoleto, available, of course, for a small fee. I was told by Father Emil that the Libro de Cosas Notables, where you find histories, historical accounts of Gindulman, of Loon, of other towns in Bohol, for a mere fee of 20 pesos, that is today for the National Historical Commission a price. So we have here much available <coughs> in the archives of the Agustinian Recollect here in Archivo Recoleto. The Archivo Recoleto is beside me and the building beside uh, where I stay in this father's library. You have here the books outside, no? the available uh, reference books, and have the four uh, living legends of historical research, Father Emil Kilatan, the archive administrator, then Father Junicio Selma from Inglanilia, the prior provincial, and Father Miguel Miro, the prior general, and of course, the most respected Augustinian Recollect historian who in December is going to publish his third volume of Historia de los Agustinos Recoletos. In the second volume, Father Cuesta, of historical accounts of the Philippines in the past history of the Agustin Recollect. So we expect another volume, the third volume. We'll show you which book later. As Father Emil had said, Amor con Amor se paga. Love is repaid by love. So the order of the Agustinian records have done so much for the Filipino people, for the People, especially Buhol, from 1768 to 1937. It is only fitting and proper for the Catholic families of all to repay that love to the order of Augustinian recollects by giving back their children to the service of the people of God in the Philippines and in the foreign missions. We have the list of friars, living friars, Punyao of Carmen Amparado of Gindulman, Pirasar of Gindulman, I think, Tubio also, Bertudas of Hagna, Cadilinia of Hagna, Granada of Gindulman, Galanido somewhere, Ham of Mapiniro of Hagna, Pahamutam of Tagbilaran, Melgas of Gindulman, Bitancor of Tagbilaran, who is going to be ordained on December, coming December 4, Domingo Saladaga, Baigan of Hagna, Galinato of somewhere in Bohol, Gindulman Bohol, and of course the most revered Lino Agono of Cortes, uh, is this, po, and Celestino Cachapero of Gindulman, who died in Taiwan. Now, what do we have in, in the archives? We have all these. So I remember a story, not a story. I saw details of some historians who went to Bohol and they talked to the Boholano teachers and other historians said, nah, these are the things you want to need, you need in order to do research in Bohol. They said so many newspapers and magazines and books and etc. but they never mentioned the Augustinian recollect sources. That was the big problem. Many people or many so-called historians or church historians or art historians or music historians who talk about Baclayon, but they never saw the Cosas Notables de Baclayon. 
which is available, which are no, the courses of tablet singular, which is available in Archivo Recoleto. I will not mention the names anymore, but they have to know that we have these news, uh, these manuscripts, archival manuscripts. But if you really want to know about the history, you also know. of the paleography, paleography, yeah, that's the word, not the other word. So if you know Spanish, but you don't know how to read yung handwriting nila, mga parang kahig, ano, kahig manok. So sayang na lang Spanish mo. But it's not the ordinary Spanish. This Spanish belong to the 17th, 18th, 19th century. So you have to have a good dictionary. And so in uh, whenever you want to talk about these towns, 28 towns, 28 towns in Bohol, go to the archive, Archivo Recoleto, and ask for the Cosas Notables. Because the Cosas Notables, for example, here in, uh, in for example, in Lobo, in 1888, 300 uh, parishioners of book died of cholera. Cholera. So you have to know, dito, ito, in these manuscripts, uh, ito sa Maribuhok din. Oh, yeah. In Maribuhok manuscript, it says that because the parish priests were mandated by the superiors, by the priors provincial, to research further on these manuscripts, on the towns, na kailan ginawa yung uh, Castillo de uh, San Vicente Perer in Maribuho. So, ang, ang tawag ngayon, Punta Cruz. 1796, nandito. Sinong gumawa? Si Padre Manuel de la Virgen de Trinidad. So, nandito lahat yung ano. So, yung historical uh, commission of the Philippines should know that here is just what you really or all you want to know about the recollect you don't have to go to spain where the chibo historical provincial you don't have to go to rome for the chibo general you know then the los agustinos recoleto or tawag na don uh archivio generale the lord in italy agustiniane recoleti so you don't have to go to rome or to uh to navarra nandito right here my goodness i have to insist because there was another teacher who went to Tagbilaran in a uh, uh, history goes to the barrios and was talking about every sources possible, but did not mention the Chibo Recoleto. Chibo Recoleto, you have the history, the history of Gindulman, uh, si John Boy Amora. Uh, John Boy, hello. So from Gindulman, got, uh, got copies from the Chibo Provincial de San Ezequiel Moreno and the other Archivo. So it's all there. You only have to know Spanish and you know how to read handwriting, Spanish handwriting. So, punta na lang kayo dito, ha? Mura lang. And the next you have the Alburquerque. Alburquerque, Bohol. I, I gave copies of this. Uh, Cosas notables de Albur, este Alburquerque. Albur man ko ng mga shirt. Tagbilaran, tagbi. Alburquerque, Albur. So, I gave to Engineer Gesterol. Hi, Engineer. Kamusta ka dyan? I gave that because he was asking about anong ginagawa sa mga mga babae na lalaki at the same time. Kasi mayroong babae na nakabuntis ng kapwa babae sa Albur yun. So, I gave him all the details. Anong tawag yun? Transgender? O hermaphrodite po. Hermaphrodite. And uh, Engineer Gesterol, a uh, fellow historian there, was very happy to have details. And then we go further to Corelia, Antequera, Dawis, Inabangan, este Inabanga, and Tubigon. But the most important for our case now is Loon. 
Here we have a 12 page manuscript folio, 12 folios, 12 hojas, uh, written by Father Felix Gillian. Felix Gillian was assigned in 1894, but he was mandated by the prior provincial. Hoy, wag ka magpatamad-tamad dyan. You write about the history of Loon. And here we have the history of Loon. In 12 pages, all ready to be mm -hmm, provided to the Loon Historical Institute or Society if ever there is. Everything you want to know about Loon is here. Almost everything. Now, the recollects. The recollects, so for your information, if you want to research about the recollects, about the recollects in Tarlac, in Pangasinan, Zambales, Batang, Batangas, Mindoro, Calamianes, Palawan, Antipolo, Contra Costa de Luzon, Pasiguran, Binangunan, Romblon, Sorsogon, Masbate, Cebu, Camotes, Bujo, Bohol, Siquijor, Negros, Capis, Basilan, and Eastern Mindanao, and especially sometimes the events in Manila. You only have to come here to be a Chibu Recoleto. Okay. All the recollects who come to the Philippines always pass by here since 1608 when this building was built by the recollects. We have there the marker, Simbahan at Convento ng Recoletos, and then the old churches, which after the war, the old church of San Nicolas, which after the war was damaged and later on demolished. It is now the site of Manila Bulletin. Now, all these recollets who come to the Philippines, most of them are from Spain, meron din mga uh, Mexican, merong isang Italian. But they all come to the Philippines in group mentioning sila sa Manila ay for posterity. Two of here were Jose Rada and Leon in Chausti. These two, you should be proud, Buholanos should be proud, that here in Buhol, we had two friars who were martyred in 1936 and they are beatified and uh, considered for veneration for the whole church. And two of them were assigned in Buhol. One of them, Leon in Chausti. The other day, somebody from Dimiao asked me details about Jose Rada and Leon in Chausti because they are planning a November, November uh, 17 to celebrate the birth of Father Jose Rada. This priest, blessed Jose Rada, Di nyo alam na mayroon na palang magiging santo, blessed ngayon, so far kasi kailangan pa ng milagro, who work in Bohol. That's a good uh, reason to celebrate and to be proud of Bohol. Kasi mayroon kayong dalawang magiging santo, milagro na lang. Now, if, if we promote these two, blessed Jose Rada and blessed Leon and Chausti, For sure, more help, more miraculous healing would come to the Buholanos. So ito si Leon in Chausti, no? from Biscaya, Spain. Na-assign po ito sa Carmen, sa Luay, sa Dimiao, then back to Dimiao. And of course, in Pilar, this was the old Sierra Bullones, Pilar na ngayon. And uh, Pilar na Pilar na Karon, Ubay.
Blessed Jose Rada. Na-assign sa na-ordain sa Cebu. Studied Cebuano in Liloan, Cebu. Na-assign sa Bilar, sa Bimiao, Pilar, Bilar, Kandihay, and finally, yun na nga, Kandihay. Sira Bulliones, uh, all Sira Bulliones. So, you should, the Bulanos should be proud. Not all Filipinos have martyrs. Mayroon nga si uh, Lorenzo Luis, pero made in China yon. Si San Pedro Calumso, made in Guam. Pero ito, more than 15 years, 15, total of 15 or 20 years, they stayed in Bohol. Bolano ito. Maron. Bisayan si Buano. Now, kaya nga si Father, ano, si Father, uh, si Monsignor o oh, Bishop, Leandro, Lea, uh, Leandro, uh, Midroso, Leonardo Midroso, pasensya na, Bishop, Leonardo Midroso, uh, nilagay niya sa O'Day, oh, Painted, have it painted si Leon in Chausti and Blessed Ustera in Chausti. Diyan sa Cathedral sa Tagbilaran, ano, the Martyrs to Motor. Actually, lima sila. Lima sila. Yung lima yon from left to right, no, si Father Julian Moreno, pamangkin ni Saint Ezekiel Moreno, si Blessed Leon in Chausti, Blessed uh, Vicente Soler, and the one in the middle was the superior of the community. Then, Blessed Vicente Pinilla, na assigned sa Batangas, and Mindoro, and of course, Blessed Jose Rada, Uhulano. So, si Bishop Medroso, binigyan ko ng isa. Professor, when I visited in, 19, in 2006, sabi niya, how do we know the lives of these two Buhulano Blessed? Blessed ah, plural yun, blessed. Leon and Charles T. Ano si Rada? Because we supposed, were supposed to promote them here in Bohol. So binigyan ko ng life ni, ni ng, ng, ng dalawang beato. Now, going back to the Jesuits. The Jesuits came to the Philippines as Padre Emil said in 1581. And they came to Bohol in 1596. They built the church not before 1596. As many of you say, Baklayon Church is the oldest in the Philippines, built by the Jesuits in 1594 and 1595. Pero ang problema, the Jesuits came on 17 of November 1596. How can they build a church when they were not there in Baklayon? Ano ba kayo? So, may paniwalaan yun. So, only the churches of Baklayon and Lobok remains uh, after the restorations, of course, in the wake of the October 15, 2013 tremors, Malayon, 2013. We must, credit to, we must give credit to the Society of Jesus for the enduring legacy of Christian faith and bequeathed to the people of God. We have the old church of Baklayon and Lobo, and the uh, Belfry of Lobo. Remember that the base of the Belfry was Tata Jesuita. Ngayon kung tagilid yan, do not blame the recollects na the second tire sa recollection. Ang fundasyon po ang dapat tagisipan. Never mind. The Jesuits built Baklayon, 1596, Lobok, Dawis, Hagna, Inabang, Inabangan, or Inabanga, Tagbilaran, Dimiao, Loon, and Maripohok. The Doctrinas. And then here we have the Jesuit missions were the first group in the Visayas to receive after over 100 years the Jesuits were expelled from the Philippines and from Bohol, they were expelled on July 3, 1768. 
Si infantry lieutenant Don Juan Lawrence was commissioned to execute the royal decree of expulsion. He rounded up the 11 Jesuits scattered in nine ball parishes and boarded them on a ship. To Manila. These are the names of the Jesuits. Asio de Scalier in Lobo, Salvador Guirisi, Jose Berringuer, Juan Bautista Jaulet, Manuel Arenas, Marcos Mar Martinez, Andres Borrego, Carlos Ber Barberan, Ignacio Agras, Pedro Pasos, and Juan Soriano. Salon, there were two priests there, Juan Bautista Jaulet and Manuel Aranas companion, or they call it in Spanish, socio. They were uh, replaced by Pedro de Santa Barbara. Ito yung peace negotiator ni Dagohoy, Jose de Santa Orosia, Nicolas de San Asuncion, sa loon si Manuel de la Concepcion. So where did the town and parish of Loon, the ministers of the Society of Jesus, the Church of Loon, was a mere camarino rat, makeshift. They stayed there for 15 years. Yun ang nagagawa nila. And the uh, convento was made of nipa and bamboo. Pinobre lang talaga. The church edifices were in a very bad state and ruined when the recollects took over in 1768. In October, the church had one sole retablo, isang retablo lang, isang altar. Extremely poor and almost ruined with very few ornaments for the divine worship. Uh, galing ito sa ano ha, yung cosas notables di loon yung sa left. Ang description ni di ko gawa-gawa ito. Kasabihin nyo, ah grabe naman. Siniraan talaga ang Diyos. Hindi, binabasa ko lang po. You want me to read the Spanish? Eh, hindi naman yung maintindihan siguro. Durante la administrasyon de los padres, administrasyon de los padres de suitas, Ki duro hasta el mes de octubre de 1768. No se registran, ni se tiene noticia de etc., etc. So, they said that the Jesuits were able to baptize 1,486. So, kunti lang mga parokyano sa loon. Kaya na, pag when the recollects arrived, In October, headed by, of course, the Santa Barbara, they occupied the uh, eight parishes. And at that time, we have no subject, nangihirapan ng mga bulano, because the Dagoy rebellion was ongoing. Hindi yung they occupied the entire goal, as some historians would love to say. That the rebellion of the Gohoy, the revolt, talagang they took over the whole Bohol. Hindi po, doon lang sila sa Norte, sa Inabanga, saka sa Talibon. So, but the recollects were complaining, especially, take note, I, I discovered that Bohol, the rebel of Bohol, si Francisco the Gohoy, died already by 1782, patay na siya. He did not live up to 1829. According to a letter sent by the Bishop of Cebu to Manila, who was complaining that the go is already dead. So the letter was uh, dated 1782. Napasa ko yun sa letter ni Ignacio Salamanca. Uh, how come mayroon pang rebellion sa Bohol? 1782, patay sa sana si Frankie Dagohoy. Ay, Frankie. Si Francisco Dagohoy. Patay na. How come meron pang rebellion? 1782, patay na po si Dagohoy. According to a letter of the bishop who was complaining to the colonial Manila that there is no more Dagohoy. Pero of course, hindi natin alam na marami pang mga uh, ano, Mga aliporis, aliporis man, subjects to the Gohoy. So, let's continue. So, the recollects, they were tasked to replace the expelled Jesuits. Jesuits. 
This book, Historia de los Agustinos Recoletos, describes almost all the, the uh, everything Pugulanos, and especially the second volume. This is the first volume. These were the towns established by the recollects and the civil authorities. You know, the Goy had nothing against the recollects. The recollects were allowed to baptize the people of the Goy in the mountains of Danao, Inabanga, Talibon, because he said, ang aming kaaway ang mga Jesuits. Sinabi ni the Goy na hindi sinabi ko. So, ang wala na yung mga kaaway natin. Kasi you know the history of the Goy. Of course, if you have watched the uh, play uh, the the Gun sa Huyuhoy, uh, the asta yun eh, the Gun sa Huyuhoy by Nito Nits Luspo and Gadila, but the Jesuits were the cause of the rebellion. Pinatay yung kapatid ni Daguhoy doon sa bundok, kalaban yung remontado yung isang rebelde na pinababa niya. The brother was a constable. Eh, duel eh, patayan eh. Ewan ko lang paano, machete or uh, ano. Basta namatay yung kapatid ni Daguhoy. Eh, sabi ni, mani, ni Padre Gaspar Benito Morales, ah, uh, Sabi ng stubborn, hard-headed Jesuit, hindi ko sinabi yun, sinabi ng ibang historian. Ayaw yun niya ilibing si, sabi ng iba si Sagarino, Dagoy, ayaw na ang ilibing. Hindi, gusto niya ilibing pero magbayad muna ng arancel. Kasi patay, ililibing. Ay, pera din yun. Ay, sa pera na sisingilin. E, ayaw naman, ayaw magbayad si Francisco Dagoy kasi daw, inutusan ng pare na huliin yun si walang pangalan. Sabi naman ng isang historian, si Sagarino daw yung huli. Hindi, si Sagarino yung kapatid ni Dagoy. But anyway, si Constantino o Renato Constantino kung ano-ano mga sinasabi nila. Anyway, so ayaw ilibing ni Gaspar Benito na magbayad muna. E ayaw na magbayad si Dagoy. Kasi inutusan siya ng pare na huliin. E namatay. E, uh, anyway, ayaw din ilibing kasi daw namatay sa jewel according to canon law. If you if you die if you are killed in a duel, you do not deserve Christian burial. Eh, nagalit si Dago Ichano at inatasan yung kapatid ko mati. Tapos na huli, eh, ayon nyo. So ang nangyari, nagrebelde si Dago. More than 3,000 followers niya umakyat sa bundok. Danaw yata ngayon, inabangga, ayaw ko lang. Sa somewhere there. Dito naman sa mapa natin, Uh, kung iba-iba na ngayon ang mga santo, hindi ko kasalanan yun na. Basta ang mga original does not or did not exist. So, nag sila. Ang nanalo, immaculate conception. Ayan na nga. So, yun. Ang yung iba, binago na naman ng mga ay, ay, kasalanan yun. Ito naman si Father Emil Kilatan, yung ating nagbigay ng introduction kanina. So dito sa Bohol, ito yung nagawang mga parokya. Father Emil is a church history professor sa Ecclesiastical School of Theology, University of Tutuma Central Seminary, Immaculate Conception Major Seminary in Giginto, Bulacan. And he, is, he has been for a long time archive administrator at Chibo Recoleto here. So, so ito yung gawa niyang research. Bibigyan na lang kayo ng kopya kung gusto niyo. Ano yung here, the map of Bohol. So, kanin, at kahapon ba yun? May lindol na naman? Sa bayan na naman, no? So, ganun. Nasa timeline tayo. <laughs> Nasa, sa fourth line. So we are talking about Loon. 
Felix Guillen was assigned in 1894. Sinabihan siya ng probinsya... Saan ba ito? Patatas dung. Ay ito. Na to rise something to research... Ha? Ang maglaro? Ang maglaro? Ipakimute na lang yun. Makikubitensya man po na po. Naun sa man mo. So, dong! Hilom dong! Madaw ta din. Just feel yourselves. So, Father Felix Guillen de San Jose came to law on in 1894. He was told by the provincial police. Itong ginawa niya. 12 pages. The first missionary in Bohol was Father Manuel de la Concepcion. Manuel de la Concepcion. Ako na pagaling naman. Pati ko kung na sina. Sorry, Professor. Whoever is the host Manuel de la Concepcion was the first missionary. Ito siya galing ito sa Norte. He came from the North. Then he was captured by the Moros along the way in near Manila when he was going to his, ano, his assignment. Manuel de la Concepcion. Okay. And so when he came to Bohol, to Loon specifically, he found also the same situation. The Moros were attacking the, the missions in the Philippines. Yes. Okay. So with, with Father Joaquin in Cabo de la Virgen de Sopetran, they were able to put the defenses necessary for the protection of the people of Loon. So, Father Manuel de la Concepcion was the parish priest, ang assistant niya si Father Joaquin in Cabo de la Virgen de Sopetran. So as mentioned here, Ito. So, uh, he was named superior and parishes of Loon at the time when the recollection were handed the administration of Bohol. During his term in Manila, he returned from Manila, he went to Balincagin in, I think it's now Mabini, in Pangasinan. And on the way, he was captured by the Moros. So, victima na ito ng Moros, si Father, the first parish priest of law, Manuel de la Concepcion. He was captured by the Moro pirates on the way to Balincagin. And he was ransomed. You know, the Moros captured many recollects, even provincial, and paying the recollects had to pay large sums of money, up to 500,000 in our equivalent now currency. And si Father Manuel de la Concepcion binayaran lang 1,000 pesos. Hindi, hindi itong 1,000 na yun na mayroong tatlong tao. No, 1,000 could be worth mga 100,000. Mahal na business yung piracy and ransom. Kaya... Of course, until now, ongoing pa rin doon sa, with, <laughs> with our Muslim brothers in the Visayas and Mindanao. So, balik tayo kay ano. So, itong si Father uh, Juan King de la Vila de Supitran. So, one of, this was the second assistant parish priest of Loona. So, you should be proud may naging obispo na, na parish priest yan. Sa Loon, obispo ng Cebu, si Joaquin de la Virgen de Sopitran, Joaquin in Cabo. He is remembered always as a, was as a very 
generous, very uh, kind uh, hospital. And of course, he rebuilt the Cebu Cathedral and he was happy to bless it, to bless the cathedral. He, will, he died in Cebu and was buried in the Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception Church, now Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish Church, uh, in front of <laughs> Freedom Park or Carbon. Now, the second uh, assistant parish priest was Bernardo Agustin Herrera de San Agustin. The parish priest was Joaquin Lopez. It is the whole in, in Baclayon first to study Cebuano. Because no priest could be assigned to a parish if he did not know the language or the dialect or language. Because Cebuano is a language. It's a language. It's a language. It's a Bisayan Cebuano. So, mayroong, mayroong examination sila, proficiency examination by those experts also in Cebuano who were also priests. So, uh, if the place where he was going to be sent on to learn the language of the place, ito nangyari kay Bernardo Agustin. He was sent to Baclayon. Then afterward, in 1770, so two years after the takeover of uh, the recollects of Baclayon, of Loon, he was sent to Loon as assistant parish priest. In the book of Fidel de Blas, the book we showed before, Father Bernardo was listed as uh, uh, up to 1778, nandoon siya parish priest. In 1778, he became the provincial secretary. So he had to go to Manila and from Muros, uh, what is the bulletin now? In 1791, he was provincial councillor, meaning the advisor of the prior provincial. He died in 1821 at the age of 17. 78, sorry. 17. Now, the first parish priest of Loon. Si Father Manuel de la Concepcion, si Father Joaquin Lopez, together with their assistant, si Father Joaquin Incabo de la Virgen de Sopitran, saka si Father Bernardo Agustin Herrera de San Agustin, had to defend Loon because 17th century is, was, or rather was, uh, plagued by Moro piratical raids. So si Father Bernardo ng Loon, in order to defend Loon, had to buy two har harkibosis o archibosis lang, walang age, pwede rin. In order to do, ito yung sample sa, ito, ang harkibosis. Bumili ang pare si Father Bernardo para e, ipagtanggol o ipaglaban o ang mga taga Loon, mga Loonanons. Kasi just like the people of Baklayon, pag may nakita ng if they saw foreigners on the show or not, I suppose there are still mountains in Loon now. So the people of Loon is uh, uh, helpless as they were during the uh, 16th, uh, yeah. 1670, they escaped to the mountains. The Moros, they robbed their harvest livestock, took them as captives regardless of age or sex, subjecting them to tortures and coerced them to renounce their Catholic faith. It was not enough to, for the records to snap out the divine fervor in the hearts that we were not afraid of putting their lives on the line in order to defend and save the properties and lives of the Lo'onanon. Here, 
We have Father Joaquin Lopez uh, in 1771, 1771, 1780, yeah, 1768. Okay. He bought, he purchased, siempre from Manila, four, five falconets, cannons, cannon, of course, together with the cannonballs, and gunpowder. And he taught the people of Loon how to use the cannons, small cannons. He further trained the parishioners how to handle other and assign sentinels to watch over the town against Moro pirates in order to avoid surprise attacks. While other, well, uh, with other Loonanons, they further devoted time to erect the quota walls. These, wrong English, these stone walls and watchtowers surrounded the church. Convent and Plaza of Loon. I think we can still see the stones left behind no? of the Plaza of Loon. And there were also watchtowers, no? And in Kabilao, I think they put up there a tower, a watchtower, and a cannon. I asked uh, Basil Romanilius, where are the cannons now? Uh, I was told that there was one cannon in front of the municipio. I don't know sino nang umuwa doon sa kabinenta, pintimbang. Ipatunol niya, ipatimbang. Oye, suli na ninyo yun. Sayang yun, historical yun. Uh, so, yung Paris, Father Joaquin de la Virin de Lusario was holding the cross in one hand and the other run with a weapon to the Spanish parishioners. He also built other church structures and supervised construction projects. They were accomplished for their usefulness as well as for the improvement of the Lord's temple. In this manner, at the cost of great sacrifices, Father Joaquin Lopez could put the main retablo in place and the two lateral retablos of the old church. This was the 18th, uh, early, uh, uh, late 18th century, when the first stone church of Loan was built. And because the Moro pirates could not easily take the town of Loan by surprise, except because of the negligence of some sentinels, the residents grew more courageous and confident of themselves. The parishioners regarded the recollect minister with utmost trust and respect. They didn't work more willingly in his projects like the walls, the church, the, later on the stairway, and the convent, the old convent, which benefited eventually the Christian community. The recollect successors, uh, yeah, the recollect successors, Jose de la Virgen del Carmen, Diego de San Cosme, Joaquin de San Jose, Joaquin de San Agustin, Santiago de San Isidoro, Ignacio de la Virgen del Rosario, and Mariano de San Jose, who since 1782 had succeeded Joaquin Lopez as parish priest. They continued the church construction begun by Joaquin Lopez during his term in 1771 and 1780. This was the first stone church they reconstructed the church by making a wall made of ciliaretes, cut stones that measured a, mi a mirror in it and a half high and Tabiki Pampango was built over. The succeeding priest embellished the church with ornaments and sacred vessels for the greater splendor of divine worship. They went on to with their projects to protect the town with stone and mortar wall and enclose the church complex. Uh, we can still see the remnants of the walls around the plaza now. And they constructed defense posts in strategic places like in Kabilao Island, that pays Sibunga. Uh, there's an iron cannon there and they built us. Uh, I was told that they also, there, there is, uh, a uh, remnant of the watchtower in Kabilao. <laughs> the 
the people of Loon witnessed the great sacrifices of the recollect missionaries who underwent to who underwent the, uh, with the job to improve the spiritual welfare and material plight. They saw the gains and benefits they were enjo enjoying while they were working side by side with their ministers. They observed that uh, well, the situation last long lasting peace and order from which they benefited. All these favorable circumstances conditions brought about an increase in the number of mountain people who abandoned their shanties in the forests and mountains and descended to the lowlands. Thereafter, they asked to be instructed in the Christian doctrine and receive baptism. The parish priest, Father Pedro Polo de la Virgen del Carmen from Spain, of course, assigned to Panglao after Agagian de Oro, and he was in loan in 1841, Calapi later on. After some years of assignment in Spain, he returned to Manila, to Cavite, and he died in Imus. When Father Pedro Polo took church of loan, he saw that the old convento was too small, and each of the ministers, he constructed a new and bigger convento wholly made of stone, and was very solid and strong. This convento still stood in 1925. And I think this became the Sacred Heart Academy. And this was destroyed during the earthquake of 2013. Pero ngayon, Ito na naman ang magandang balita. Si Father Antonio Yus de la Concepcion built the Inangangan in 1847 to 1850. He was Paris of Loon in 1847, 1850. Walang patawa dito. He was an indefatigable minister. And what he did in three years of service in the parish seemed beyond belief. Inayo niya yung Casa Real beside the convento as well as the Casa Tribunal at the foot of the Inangangan or the 198 steps. Pero one, one blogger and repeat, repeated by another blogger who repeated the same blog and mentioned 174 steps. Ay, sino nagnakaw ng anong ilang steps yun? Nawala na. <laughs> So, hindi yun 174, 198, excuse me ah. So, itong ginawa Antonio Yus, unfortunately, I was in front of Father Neil and the other archivists in Rome, in Spain, in, in the provincial Curia that there is no picture or photograph of Reverend Father Fray Antonio Yus de la Purisima Concepcion. Yung Fray meaning ano yan, brother of the, the congregation or the order. Brother Fray from Fraile, Frater. So, uh, Antonio Yus, siya yung gumawa ng inang angan in 1847 to 1850. Yung mga taga -buhol, taga will know what I'm talking about. No? This is the 198 stone steps. Kasi daw nahirapan ng mga tao, no? O makyat, o bumaba doon sa dagat. So, pinagawa niya. According to the uh, Libro de Cosas and Tables 48P. Ito na ngayon ang inangangan going down to the beach or to the port. The people of Loon had a hard time going down to the coast since it was located on an elevated portion and a rocky cliff was between the town proper and the coast. So si Father Antonio, hindi siya mismo nag ano, ah, nag carve ng mga bato. Siyang nag-supervise. Pero as, as usually happens in our history, yun ang mga supervisor, ay yung they would be remembered yung nag-idea ng ano so ng ano 
project. So the object of generation, a staircase of 198 stone steps, broad and well measured. He was a zealous priest, tireless in providing all kinds of spiritual and material goods to his parishioners. At 46, he died in Loon in 1850. He was the only recollect minister to die there and be buried at the gospel site near the pulpit. The people of Loon remembered very well Father Antonio used with gratitude. It was in the first stone church. Now let's hear what the Augustinian brother said about Loan in 1850. Father Buseta E. Father and Father Bravo. He said that Loan is a town of the parish priest and a governador Silio in Bohol Island. It belongs to the province and diocese of Cebu. It is located on the west coast of the island on an elevated site where all winds meet. Its climate is rather hot. The Augustinian Recollect Fathers administer this sound. It has an annex visita, Katagbakan, Sulat nila Katarbakan, with 1,897 houses. The Loon is endowed with a convent and a community building with a jail. This is the Casa Tribunal eh, near the Inangangan. No on, there are now no more, which are considered the best. The there is an elementary school whose teacher is compensated with community funds. The church is an average structure. So, ito yung first stone church. Kasi ang first church was made of nipa and bamboo lang by the Jesuits. 15 years lang mga Jesuits of Bohol, they had no time to build a church like as big as Lobo or Baklayon. So, the parish priest built the average lang. Uh, anong character ng mga inhabitants, sabi dito, is no different from that of the forefathers. They are indomitable, mga gahig ulo. And some used to flee with the remontados, meaning they used to escape to the mountain. Uh, sabi yun ng mga Augustinian sa hindi man ng mga recollection. So, Padre Antonio Ubida, a very strange ito, he was assigned in Bohol after he learned Visayan Cebuano, and he was assigned in Bilal, Luay, Bakayon, and he wrote the bestseller La Teresa. He was Paris with of Loon later, uh, when, no, much later, I think. Uh, this is the Urbana at Pilisa ng mga Tagalog sa Cebu, sa Cebu and Mindanao, in Visayas and Mindanao. La Teresa. Okay, si Father Antonio Obida succeeded Father Rius in 1850. O oh, ito yung nangyari sa unang simbahan, unang simbahang bato. Alas 7 ng gabi, when the church was closed and no people were inside, the whole church collapsed, crumbled to pieces. Pero sabi ni Trota Jose, ay conjecture lang naman ito, Sabi niya sa Visita Iglesia Bowl, nasunog daw, Diyos ko. Tapos nasunog ulit in 1953. Nasunog ulit in 1853. Walang sunog po nangyari sa loon. Ano ba kayo? So, nag-collapse ng simbahan. Bakit kaya malalaman natin later on? So, eventually, the mischief did not cause any casualty. Eh, it caused great grief among the uh, people of Loon because the religious rights could not be solemnly done. Just like after the 2013 earthquake, doon sila sa payag-payag sa may plaza. Father Obida built at once a temporary church no? made of nipan bamboo. And, and then this was the temple until Father Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios, massive church. Okay. Ito po si Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios provided by the Archivo Recoleto. Jose Garcia, ito yung gumawa ng pangalawang simbahan na bato. The builder, walang alam kayo kasi, hindi kayo nagtanong, hindi kayo humingi ng picture. The builder of the second stone church of the on, si Padre Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios, 
was born in Asturias in 1817. He arrived in Manila after his ordination and trip from Cadiz, Spain. His first assignment was Cebu, 1842. Then he was assigned to Lobo in 1843 to study Visayan Cebuano. Proficient in the language, he was then named Paris Priest of Bilar for 10 years and May before he was canonically installed as Paris Priest of Loon and went on to serve the parishioners of Loon for 34 years. It was Father Jose Garcia de la Vila in the Lower Medio. He retired later on in Tobigo in 1891 and he resided in the convent of the Recollect in the Immaculate Conception in Cebu City, now known as Colegio de University of San Jose and Our Lady of One Carmel Parish Church. He died on January 1, 1894, at the age of 77 in Cebu. So, ito si Pater Jose Garcia, ito yung gumawa ng simbana, bumagsak. Yung Lindol, October 15, eight years ago. In his biography, Father Sadaba said, he retired at the parish of Tubigon. He retired uh, assistant parish and spent the reigning of his years in Cebu. The Recollect Order gave him other honorary posts like prior, prior Bucal of Namaila, prior Presidente of Cebu, from which he resigned, prior vocal of Bacayon, prior vocal of Tandag in Caraga. And this prior vocal means that you are uh, assigned to, to a chapter, provincial chapter, you are elected to a bishop and you represent uh, those places or parishes. Finally, he was become provincial of Northern Bohol in 17, 1878 and 1885. So, I okay. Father Orsi Garcia left behind in loan uh, many memorable things, especially the church, the grandiose church, and the school buildings there, through his initiative and under the direct supervision, were constructed, and many others of significance, projects of significance. Okay. He was helped by the people of Loon because he was very hardworking, diligent. So in 1898, Father Guillén said, Namatay si Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios in Cebu. Andi pala. He took over the parish of Loon in 1854 and very worthy of praise because of his tireless zeal and hardworking character. He commenced the construction of the church as soon as he arrived to take charge of the parish of Loon. It is a magnificent church, the best among the good ones of this province, in spite of the measly resources of only 1,550 pesos nakita doon sa community funds of Loon. But he was able to build a church. As we recall, Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios took church in October on 14 of January 1854 as proprietary parish priest. And in the following year, he started the construction of the magnificent church without any funds other than the 1,500. 57 pesos, I'm here up 70 cents. Uh, so I am not, ano, uh, I am not, uh, ito, conjecturing. I've just followed the process to publish here. The church was ready for. Trans was transferred on August 22, 1866. So tapos talaga, the painting of the whole edifice were completed. Uh, so this included the installation of the pipe organ. I don't know where is the pipe organ now. 
The whole church is of new construction except for the two of the facade which belong to the old church. The nave did not have the elevation it should have for fear of the tremors and for the great fear arising from the enormous weight which gravitates on the, pillar, gravitates on the pillars. It was for this reason why the two lateral roofs were flat and level and there were leaks after three days of rain. Balik tayo kay Father Jose Garcia. So, nahirapan talaga siya sa construction. No? Uh, so, yung natapos ng simbahan, when all was, hindi yung 1864, 1866 na natapos. Mali-mali yung mga ibang historians. Saka kaya kinopya nila. We do not know. So, uh, andito yung ano, 80 baras long and 37 baras wide. I suppose this was followed by the historians of the National Commission, Historical Commission and the National Museum. So, ginawa din ni Father Rosy Garcia yung dalawang school buildings. In 1898, nandoon pa yung school buildings on the opposite sides of the plaza. Ah, pinatayuan pa rin ng ano, isang building para sa mga sa matulugan ng mga teachers. These are among the best projects of the Recollects in Bohol, meaning yung mga building sa Loon. Ito yung mga... <clears throat> Ito yung mga... Ito yung mga ginawang mga eskulahan doon sa Bohol. Some of the schools sa Baclayon, sa Dimiao, Albur. Pero I saw these pictures also. Mayroon isang picture ng Albur. Sa Corelia daw ito. Please correct me. In Albur ba ito o Corelia? St. Augustine Academy in Panglao. Mga kumbento yun o na St. Mary's Academy in Dulman. And Colegio de la Medalla Milagrosa in Hagna. Also, the Sacred Heart Academy of Lone was a former convent of the Recollects. Ito yung second parish church of Our Lady of Light, Nuestra Señora de la Luz, Our Lady of the Scepter, Nuestra Señora del Cetro, who was blessed in 1864 and completed in 1866 by Father Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios. This photograph is taken from the Archivo Recoleto, colonial period. And then we have there uh, another photo of the church in color, according to some historians. It is the crowning glory of the Augustinian Recollect architecture. Now, in 1879, how was Lone described? Ito yun. If you know Spanish, okay lang. But if you don't know Spanish, we have a translation, more or less. The parish church of Loan is one of the best buildings of its kind in these islands, in Visayas and Mindanao. No? Elegant construction of three names began on February 8, 1855, and supervised by the director of public works of Cebu, Don Domingo Escondrillas, and finished after seven years. Is that to the great satisfaction of the parish visitor? The church interior has a cemented floor of 80 yards long, 34 yards wide. The central nave is 16 yards wide, and the two lateral naves are uh, eight, 8 yards wide. The exterior is cemented 2 yards wide and 13 yards high. The central nave is 15 yards high and the height of the ridge, meaning the lateral walls is 20 yards. 
There are two spacious sacristies and two belfries on the both sides of the facade. The height is 30 yards. Now, the reparation of the church, repara, reparation, the repair of the church, uh, according to Father Felix Guillen, ito yung sinulat niya, in 1894, siya ang parish priest doon. Ito si Father Gillian. Naupaw na madira sa loon. So he was assigned in loon in 1894. Um, after, yeah, 1894. He resigned as parish priest of Tobigo in 1893 until he, he was the last parish priest of Tobigo in 1898. He was a learned friar. He wrote Grammatica Bisaya and two collections of manuscripts, Sermonario Bisaya. Ito yung sinulat niya, reparasyon. Repair of the church. The central nave of the church of this, nave of the church of this town does not gravitate, would gravitate toward the central column. For this reason, the two roofs of the lateral naves were flattened with a small decline. Anyway, during the earthquake, it collapsed. So it was in a very deplorable state now. After they acquired the authorization of the Bishop Martin Alcocer, to defray the expenses of the repair of the church. So it was finished in 18, at the outset, so a few months in 1894, at the outset in January 1894, so on top of 1890, that's the So, and the descriptions are repair. This photograph was taken in 1939 or 30, 38, 39 by the future founder of University of San Jose Recoletos and Bishop of Santiago because they were asked by the provincial to go around Bohol and take pictures. Ano nang nangyari? Kung saan na nahitabos sa mga simbahan na dito ko sa mga Recoletos? So they went around. They took this picture. So, sa Chibu Recoleto pa rin. Ito yung statistics ng loan. So, in 1770, two years after the takeover of the Recoleto, 2,310 lang mga ang population, mga tao sa loan. By the time the Recoleto left, mga siguro mga 20,000 sila, dagang kaya an improvement of 18,000. 9,240 ang taxes. One tribute, according to the estimate we had learned, was equivalent to five. So one family paid a tribute and one family usually had five members. So if you have a... Yan na nga, ito na ang computation. Ay, sorry. Ito was a photograph taken in the taken in 1930s. Uh, could this be the convent, the old convent? The first convent? Anyway, this is this was the Recollect Church built in 1855 to 1855 to eight. No, nah, yes, 1864. By Father Rosie Garcia de San Lorenzo. Sayang Father Rosie Garcia de San de Labyrinth de Lorenzo is not mentioned here. Na siyang nag naghirap talaga, naganap ng pundo, naganap ng tao, siyang nag-hire kay Domingo Escondrillas. 
Pero sige lang, ganun talaga. Ah, ito naman ang... I saw this one sa poster sa Loan Church before. 19 kopong-kopong. Maraming mali ito kasi if you think, no, 143 years kung ang birin sa Kasilak stayed in Loon and it became only official patroness of Loon ang nakagawa ng simbahan na parang barong-barong lang. Grabe naman. It had to have a recollect priest to build a strong church. So another uh, problem here. Indeed, uh, the first stone church was built in the 18th century. Uh. Ito naman sinabi dito. May milagro daw ang birin sa Kasilak in the 18th century. I don't know where is this ano now, poster or... So, kung 400 years na sa loon ang sila, bakit during the Jesuit wala silang nagawang simbahan? Itanong lang natin sa mga Jesuits later. And sabi dito, the first miracle attributed to the Virgen de Casila happened in the 18th century when a band of Moros, oh, famous ito mga Moro pirates, uh, sailed towards Napo to plunder the village. The Lady of Light purportedly Purportedly appeared in her most radiant glory atop the 174. Allah, 198 to that year. Anyway, stone steps of Inang Angan. The binding light glowed from her, forced the intruders to sail away. Since then, miracles have been experienced by countless Kasilak devout. By the way, Ginawang. In ang angan, 1847, according to the records, the official records, ito, mayroon na daw ang ano, in ang angan in 18th century. Grabe naman, 1817, 1817, 18. Paano mag-appear Our Lady of Light doon sa in ang angan na wala pang in ang angan? Ano ba yan? So anyway, pag-isipan na lang ninyo. In the time of Father uh, of the Recollects, we have with the mortuary chapel beside the street leading to the old cemetery and a Gusinian Recollect Kirti structure. This was a little damage during the earthquake, no, pero it was already uh, restored. Uh. This was taken during the, the late 1930s. Ah, nandun yung kotse ni Father Ligara at ni Brother Angel Rab Pablo Grabalos. Yung kotse dyan sa right, second photo mo. Yung kotse hiniram ko. Ay, say, hiniram nila. And this is one of the recollect... Ano ka ito? A watchtower. No? There, were, uh, there was a wall surrounding the... There was an enclosure uh, surrounding the plaza in 17th, 18th century to defend the town and populace from the Moro piracies. So, nandun pa siguro ito. I do not know. I have not visited for a long time doon. Ito pa rin yung mga walls noon. And here's the terrible earthquake of October October 15, 2013. Ubigon daw yun, yung may babae, may kakarga o bata. And then to the right is uh, Maripoho. Below is Lobo. And the recollectures of Dimiao in the center, bumagsak yung pediment. And the church of Baklayon, bumagsak yung canopy. Ito na nangyari sa loon. Uh, we saw these pictures many times. Ito, nahapay. Ito ang loon. Now, somebody texts me during after the earthquake and asked me because somebody 
posted sa Facebook, ang mga recoletos daw, dili kay baw mo gama o simbahan. 21 churches were damaged and loon ang maribok totally uh, raised to the ground. And yung sa lobok, yung fasad lang at saka baka yun. Pero hindi na alam nga. According to Padre Emil, no? ang patrices nagpatibay yung sa lateral walls, sa walls sa mga simbahan ng patres, yun ang nagpatibay ng simbahan, ang walls. Yung mga nasa harap ay gawa-gawa na lang yun later on. Anyway, I asked our expert, uh, earthquake expert in general gesturol, perhaps the only expert in in earthquake engineering in the whole Philippines. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to tell us later on. That the equivalent of 1,000 over 1,000 heroes. Hey, so, ano ba ito nga ang kuwan? 1,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Una pa naman? 1,000 yung ano, gestural lang. Ang chud 7.2. Uh, ano yung istorya niya? So, uh, one megabam, one at nuclear atomic bomb nga, hapay na ang Hiroshima, unsa pa kaya ka ng 1,000? And according to Gisterol, gialsa ko na simbahan sa loob na gibundak. Uh, Ugno, yun. So, mungkin na itabo. So, now, after eight years, like the myth, Phoenix of your the Marian Temple and an ashes of 2013. Like Mama Mary, the evening star, the star of the adjoining sea, her brand new temple alone brightens the twilight, the bluish horizon of that serene sea, separating ball from the cradle of Christianity, Cebu. The Marian Temple of Lawn, standing proud and strong, ready to face the challenges of the next 200 years to come. And so Bishop Abit Oy of Tagbilaran for rehabilitated rebuilt church of Loon from Dr. Rene Escalante, yung marker lang pala nila, as historical commission and the construction of the church from the National Museum here, Director General Jeremy Barnes. So here we have the interior of the Church of Loon, the brand new Church of Loon. And here we have the interior of the Recusine Recollect Church of Our Lady of Light and the interior of the Rebuild Church. Mas maganda, never mind, I hate comparisons. The retablo of the Rebuilt Marian Temple. And the interior dome of the rebuilt Marian Temple adorned with the paintings of the evangelists Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John in the four corners and our sacred and sacred heart of Jesus, our Lady of Life, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Anthony, Saint Francis Xavier, and three other names. And here we have the people of law now attending with face masks. Ang iba may face shield pa during the pandemic. And we have here the old churches of Bohol. Yung iba ruin, yung iba resort. Mayroon isang Lutheran protest, Lutheran pastor. Lutheran na protestant pa. Anyway, sabi niya, these uh, these uh, words were, were said when he was looking at Loon Church. Sabi niya, these old churches fascinate me. When standing over them, especially in a remote place, I feel a sense of mystery that is hard to explain. Their enduring grandeur, in spite of the centuries, the stories they could tell, 
the life that could touch their mortar and stone as part of a faith. All this is a certain magic for me. Sabi ni Don Farenbrink, pastor ng mga Lutirano. So dito sa makita natin yung mga simbahan ng Albor, Pendihay, Agna, Duero, Lila, Talibon, Dimiao, Tubigon, Lau, Tagbi, ay Tagbi good. Bilaran and Garcia, Garcia first, este, Garcia Hernandez and Tagbilaran Bohol. Ang ganda no, no? Ito yung pinagkakitaan ng mga tourism, ano? Stakeholders. So, Christians and tourists today can only imagine the great sacrifices and countless deprivations that our ancestors, both parishioners, Augustian recollect ministers, underwent in the 19th century. And they work hard hand in hand to erect these massive monuments in Lord for themselves and for those who had come after them. Veritable heritage of yore. In this remote place of history, as the priests and parishioners of the Marian parish of Loon lived for over 200 years against all odds until they persevered and they were resilient in order to give a fitting temple for the Almighty and enduring abode for the Eucharistic Jesus, where they could worship the Holy Triune God and render veneration to Mama Mary. Our Lady of Light, Our Lady of the Scepter. I was told by Mr. Romanilios that this image belongs to the Rilampagos. Anyway, so now I'm challenging the people of Loon or the experts of Loon, Cebuano, Visaya. This is the best time to revive this novena by using the modern Visayan Cebuano. Translating it into English for everyone to appreciate this age-old Marian devotion of Blue Unanons and show to the whole world how they cherish Mama Mary's maternal protection. If you read there, it says, Patubalani sa gugma sa mga tao pinalanga. 1905 pa itong ano, ah, gosos. Itong dalawang linya, gal, parang is it, the echo also the Batubalan is a gugma of the Santo Nino. Truly, this rebuilt church is an amazing feat that merits the love and appreciation of everyone who gazes at the restored huge temple of God dedicated to Mary. It shall be etched indelibly in every heart and mind. It shall forever be remembered by the next generations of resilient believers who persevere in their Christian faith and by built by a fervent devotees of the Virgin de Casilla of this town in the Philippines and the global village of Loonanon immigrants. And a prayer and may the steadfast faith, Christian faith, whose seeds were sown by the Jesuits and nurtured by the Augustian recollects and diocesan clergy, as well as by the uh, society of the divine word missionaries and other uh, religious orders there. Also the Christian Recollect Sisters, why not? As well as the deep filial devotion to Mama Mary, Our Lady of Light, Our Lady of the Scepter, to the people of God in Loan. People of God means the church in Loan today. For the next 200 years, two centuries, towards another 268 years. And these are my sources. And maraming salamat, dagang salamat. An acknowledgement to Fray Emilio Quilatan, the Holy Name University priest, fathers, the Collector School of Theology, Father Leander Barot, the rector. Of course, our expert here, Father Jirix Vincent Gamulo, OER, of Bayawan City, Negros Oriental, Mr. Bayos Romanilios, the office of the parish priest, the office of the mayor, Relampagos, uh, uh, relative or brother of Vice Governor Rene, Father Panedas, Father Almayo, Cristiano Legitimas, Vera Velocido, the alumni bus 2006 of the 
Civil Art Academy. The Recoleto in Communications Incorporated, the Archivo Recoleto, Archivo Historico, Archivio Generale, and uh, ito, wala na. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Do you have any question? Thank you so much, Professor Romanilius, for this very great and wonderful opportunity of learning with you. And I feel more blessed after having learned from you that we have blessed of the Roman Catholic Church to have shared and made Bohol their home for some time. Thank you so much, um, Professor. And uh, take away line from you, Amor con Amor se paga, love is repaid by love. Thank you so much for that, Professor. And um, with that, I am very much thankful once again to the sponsors of this um, webinar. Of course, our resource speaker, Professor Manilios, and um, the Holy Name University, headed by the University President, Father Well F. Lato, SVD, the Integrated Basic Education Department Principal, Dr. Cristiano S. Um, Legitimus, to the province of St. Ezekiel Moreno, Order of Augustinian Recollex, or Lady of Light Parish Loon, headed by the um, parish priest, and Shanara, SHA Alumni Batch 2006, and the Office of the Mayor of LGU um, Local Government Unit of Loon. Thank you so much for making this affair possible for all of us. At this point, I would like you to turn over it to um, our open forum. This will be moderated by uh, our Holy Name University Marketing and Advertising Officer, Ms. Mera, uh, Ms. Vera Vilosido. Um, take the virtual stage, uh, Madam, Madam Vera. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tabaransa, uh, for doing a good job. Uh, so at this juncture, uh, I would like to um, check on your questions uh, for our distinguished panelists this afternoon. By the way, Prof, uh, thank you very much. That was a very, uh, uh, very good um, immersion <laughs> discussion on uh, Bohol and, uh, and uh, especially on Loon. Um, so let me see, is anyone, can we see on uh, from the, you can raise your, hands on the comments or if you have a chat on our we are live on our holy name uh university official facebook page so there might be questions there and we are also on uh, zoom so we're checking on the chat boxes uh to see if there are any questions okay i don't see anything on the chat box yet so anyone who would like to uh, raise her, his, her hand and ask a question uh, while we have our uh, esteemed uh, speaker and resource persons here in the person of Professor Romanilios and uh, uh, Father Kilatan. Question, where does the title, there's a question here from, let me see. Uh, the Centro come from, title. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, where does the title Nuestra Señora del Centro come from? Okay, and there's a okay. feedback. Okay. okay, please. Some answer. The Nuestra Señora del Centro, I do not know where it, where it came from, no? Maybe it is born within the community. Maybe, I'm just making a hypothesis because we need documentary proofs, no? Of why the name, the title was changed because was she holding a scepter? So that's the question, no? There are many questions to be answered but need further research. But in the Marian titles, there is no such in Nuestra Señora del Centro. No, Our Lady of the Scepter. Because what is the scepter? It is more on the title Our Lady of Mercy. And the mercy at that time is the scepter of the monarch. Because the scepter of the monarch can forgive, can cancel away all your, uh, we might say, 
criminal charges or those who were against you, one, one's extending towards you. That's the, the biblical symbol of the scepter. It is the extension of mercy. That's why the Blessed Mother has the title, Nuestra Señor, up to now, Nuestra Señor de la Merced, Our Lady of Mercy, not scepter. Now, if it's the Kasilak, no, Kasilak is like, actually, if, this, if, if the image is Nuestra Señor de, de Kasilak, it should be, the Blessed Mother should be holding a candle, known as also in our tradition, Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria, Our Lady of the Candel. Now, why, was, why is the image holding a scepter? I do not know. It needs further re- Where did the image come from? Who made the image? Where was it made? What was its original title? Why was it changed from the original title to Our Lady of the Scepter? Still, these are questions to be answered for further research by a researcher. That will be all for now. very much, uh, Father. Uh, Prof. Romanilios, you have something to add to that? I am... Okay. Uh, many years ago, there was a poster in front of the church that said, the Virgin Sakasila the Lady of Light of Lohan was enthroned as patroness of Mindanao on September 8th at Butuan, Agusan del Norte. But in 1610, when Moro bandits were attacking and looting some communities in southern Philippines, Reverend Father Pedro Lopez and some devotees of the Casila sailed for Cebu to keep her out of harm's way, they instead found themselves dropping anchor near Sandingan Island, where the local residents advised him to proceed to the well-established village of Napo, Loon's nucleus community. After being venerated for 143 years, the Casilac became the official patroness of Loon. 1953, when Parroquia de Nuestra Señora de la Luz, the present Our Lady of Light Paris was established. These, these statements are full of mysteries. First of all, from 1597, up to 1753, when Loon was established as a doctrina by the Jesuits, walang simbahan na malaki. I could not believe na the Jesuits who have been building the churches of, Lo- of Lobok and Baklayon after 143 years, had not built the church of Loon. And when the Recollects took over in October 1768, they found only a makeshift shanty made of nipa and bamboos standing there. Now, if they really, if this statements were true, how come for 143 years walang nagawa na simbahan? And remember that the also mentioned here, it's also mentioned here that mayroong milagro daw nagpakita ang birin sa kasila in the eight, in the in the 18th century, on top of the inangangan, na hindi pa nagawa ang inangangan, ginawa ang inangangan in 1847, paano ka makatayo sa inangangan na wala pang inangangan na yung 100, sabi nga dito, 174 steps. 
sa, according to the Recoleca sources, according to F Father Felix Gillian, yung chronicler ng Loon history, he said there were 198. Please tell me which is correct. 174 or 198. Can anybody from Loon go there to the Inangangan and count them again? So, but this or there is already a discrepancy. 18th century, the apparition of Our Lady of the Light. Pero ang Inangangan was built in 1847. How do you reconcile the discrepancies? Thank you. Father Kilaton and Prof. Romanilios, uh, I understand that uh, the Depth Ed uh, Division of, not division, but district of uh, Loon, North and South Banasar are here and they're doing uh, cultural mapping of uh, Loon. And so this one is very interesting, very relevant, very uh, they very uh, needed at this time. So I am, I see, I saw that there was a question from uh, Dr. Grace Ramada from Ray Monreal. Uh, I hope that, that, that those questions answered, uh, those answers uh, were appropriate or good answers for uh, Sir Wilson. Sharing the question of Sir Ray Monreal, what happened to the escuelas that were constructed in the churchyard? Ray is the, I believe, the uh, Trism or the, an officer of uh, LGU uh, Loan. Would you have that on your accounts or on your archives, uh, Prof or uh, hey. Father? According to our chronicler, Father Felix Gillian de San Jose, there were two schoolhouses built one for girls and another one for boys on both sides of the plaza. In front, I mean, there's a square there, a plaza. And then on one side, there was the schoolhouse or the school building for girls, another school building for the boys. And there was also another uh, little house built for the teachers. So that if the teacher lived far away, he could stay there or live there and teach the children anytime he, want, he or she wanted. So in 1898, the two, the two schoolhouses were still existent. Now, I have no records or there are no records. What happened after 1898? That's a big question. Sounds like uh, the work of uh, uh, the cultural mappers is, uh, is, that is the work of the cultural mappers now? Okay. Um, Ray or Mom Grace, does that answer your question? Uh, she said, based on the results of the recent cultural mapping, there are 212 steps, Mom Vera. There is a breakdown. <laughs> okay, so... That was that. That's the answer to the other question earlier. Now, uh, numbers are increasing. Two hundred twelve, uh, Prof. Okay. Uh, dugangan. Na dugangan. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you also, Ray, for the the question and for your participation. There's another question here from, uh, Mom Michelle. Prilieta, she's a faculty of uh, Holy Name University. Uh, my question is, are the existing paper documents in Loon updated with the errors you pointed out earlier? Where can we find such updated copies? I also noticed uh, some of the old photos were retrieved from Spain and outside source. Are the same photo docs available locally for future researchers? I think you already mentioned that earlier, Prof, how to access. Uh, uh, my only experience when I was in Loon, uh, when I went to Loon in 2004, to, many times I visited Loon. I see there are so many Romanilioses there, anywhere. 
at the back of the store there, I visited. They gave me food because I was a Romanilius. And in the convent, the Father Arnold Goder, I think at one time, the parish priest, I think he's already dead. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so I, I saw there in one of the rooms, air-conditioned rooms ng new parish uh, parochial house, the, the, some Mormons, some Mormons were scanning the documents of Loon. And I suppose those were baptismal documents, baptismal certificates scanned. And I hope and I pray that copies were left with the parish of Loon. We'll ask Father the parish priest there. And in my own curiosity, I entered one of the sacristies there and I saw so many old documents which were lying on top of the other, meaning books, parochial books, probably Libro de Nuclears, marriage books, Libro de Cargos de Datas, or Libro de Bautizos, Libro de Defunciones. They were piled on top of the other, that was a wrong practice. That method is wrong. When you pile documents, do not pile on top of the other because the pages, the manuscripts or the old pages stick together. And yung mga pages, if, they are, they, if the handwriting was written in ink, they will stick to the next page. So, sayang lang. So, I, I, I told them, I told them, please, make your books stand, not lying on top of, the, of one another, kasi they will, they will be rotten, they cannot be opened in, in the future. I don't know what happened after my visit to Loon. Yeah, the question, you know, experience ko kanina, in the existing paper updated with the error, you pointed out, wala pa. No, no, I will have to submit my paper to the proper authorities there, to the parochial parish priest team, no? They call it team, or to the parish, to the mayor. Uh, updated copies what do you mean by updated copies of my paper or that you cannot update the manuscripts ano yung meaning diyan miss bilosido where can we find such updated copies son of mom Rilieta, yes uh, an outside source are the are the same photo docs um yeah i think uh, this can be answered by the uh, ongoing uh, cultural mapping that is uh, going on uh, in the uh, law on right now with the Ted, uh, ma'am. Uh, also, the question was, are the photo docs that you presented available locally for future research researchers? I think you already uh, answered that at the beginning, Prof. They're available at the Archivo. Am I correct? Oh. Recoleto. How do they do that? Can they email or can they, can they, um, you know, like uh, write someone or how do they access? Is there a website or we can just. Ask. I will answer that now. Now the Archibo Recoleto, we are located in Quezon City. No particular in Mirena subdivision, just uh, near to our neighbor, who is the Iglesia de Cristo main temple. And you have to pass through the Besides Avenue and Congressional Avenue. Okay, But before you come here, no, you have to uh, email me. No? And I will uh, no, uh, I just give on the email address. No? 
That is Archibo Recoleto 1994 at gmail.com. Uh, and present yourself who you are and what are your questions. No? If you're going to have a formal research, you have to present a scanned letter stating your research. No? And what are your research there? Research it, research. No? So I could prepare the documents you need for research. Many of our documents here, we have the hard copies and digital copies coming, the digital copies coming from Spain. So what uh, we are not, the, in our website in Recoleto School of Theology, in the part of history, we have already the catalog of all the digital documents available in the archive. So you should know what are your research, the topic and the place of your research. Then. Another requirement, you should know your Spanish. I'll give you the document and give the person translation. Oh, this is the title of the document and this is the content. But I cannot give the, the whole translations for you because I'm also busy. But I could give you some interpretations of what, what you need or you do not need. You know? and, and per copy, digital copy, we don't give the soft copy. We only print the copies no? in long form band paper. We charge 20 pesos per page. Okay. So that's the way you have to come here. So again, Archibo Recoleto1994 at gmail.com. So that's you can contact me. Okay. So this, and, and we have to make an appointment because of the pandemic. No, we have to limit our, because it is a closed space because it is air conditioned and we have to control the temperature within the archives. That will be all for now. Okay, thank you very much. I, I think the same answer goes for uh, the municipal engineer of Dimiao, Joel uh, Wewax Dahirok. He, he is asking, ma'am, if can I ask Professor Romanilios, can he help us acquire the Cosas Notables of Dimiao? We need it badly in preparation for the launching of the diocese program for blessed uh, Rada and blessed in uh, in Chowski. So I think the same answer, no? Uh, Archivo. <laughs> I forgot now. Archivo, Archivo Recoleto. Okay. Archivo Recoleto 1990. I received ano, uh, from, ano, from one of the priests no, asking for the life of Father Rada and Father Leon and Chausti. No, I'm pre I already have to copy the documents and I have to send it to them. But the problem is, no, the name is Father Christian. Christian, I forget the surname. No? Texon, Father Christian Texon. I do not know what parish is. he from Dimiao or, uh, uh, or Duero? Duero no? I'm not so sure. No? Christian Texon, Father Christian Texon, and he has. I gave them the notice. You have to. I'll just uh, count the number of pages. And then you have to give me the money for the photocopying and I, the LBC. So I, you have to send it through uh, through Palawan or Cebuana uh, not to, to pay me. No, no. I have to. Uh, no, I have to. We have to pay for the many things that we need. No. Now uh, it's already prepared. I have the. Professor Romanis wrote books, and one of the books that was, which was already copied from the Cosas Notables and from the letter of his imprisonment, Father Jose Rada, is already printed in English. And I have photocopied them, and I'm getting also the triptych of the beatification of the martyrs of Madrid. And the martyrs of Madrid included, this is a group of recollects plus one diocese who were killed by the communists in, during the Spanish Civil War. So we have a complete data, and I'm going to say that the triptych is free, but the data that I have photocopied, you have, they have, they have to pay. I'm going to send, send the billing to them, to Father Christian Texon, okay? wherever he may be. Okay? So you can text me, and it's already, you know, the book will be published or printed later on. No? But I have the manuscript translated from Spanish to English by Professor Romanillos. The Life of Father Leon and Chausti and Father Jose Rada, blessings. Okay, uh, we wax. I hope that you're you got that and you're listening, and that uh, you uh, can. Here, uh, in my paper, I made a timeline 
And I believe a few days ago, I sent a copy of the timeline of Father Leon, uh, of Blessed Leon in Chaos, one of the two blessed or Bohol. And this timeline, no, the other timeline, brother. Yon, binigay ko sa ya, kaya na yun, a certain Gloria Facebook friend ko, Gloria. Uh, then she received it. And then I also had made another timeline of Father of Blessed Jose Rada. Next one. No, Rada, Rada. Ayon. Because on November 17, they would celebrate uh, to 2021, less 1871, <laughs> the 160th anniversary of the, of the birth of Blessed Jose Rada. Yes. And it's very comforting to know that Blessed Rada stayed most of his uh, ministry in the Philippines in Bohol. He spent only one month in Dimiao. Take note, one month lang from March 7th, 1886 to April 6, 1886. One month lang. Well, we should invite the people and the priest, the parish priest of Candihay, uh, Chirabuliones, Pilar, uh, uh, Bilar, and um, so ito si Father uh, Blessed Jose Rada built or had ordered a bell built in Manila and delivered to Sierra Bullones. It's now Pilar, uh, Sierra Bullion. The old Sierra Bullion is now Pilar. And unfortunately, the bell was uh, taken down from the belfry and put outside on a on a on a makeshift ano, bell hanger. And uh, it's a good thing that now is still being used. Dira nila kita ng mga kanding nila. No sa man mo, eh? And it says there, it, this bell was built by by Father Jose Rada. Anya karon hita na lang sa kanding na unsa man mo, oy? Ayuhan ninyo, itago ninyo. So instead of tying the goats there, it's a big, uh, uh, there are two bells outside Pilar. Okay, thank you very much. And I can help also uh, make the timeline of Father Leon in Chauste. What? Because after all, the bishop already had given his blessing by putting the two recollect Blessed Jose Rada and Leon and Chauste at the internal dome, interior dome of the cathedral of Tagbilaran. Okay? Does the name uh, Gloria Magaro sound, uh, ring a bell? So there's a um, chat here. There's a message in Facebook that uh, must be Gloria Magaro. Huh? Ask. Does that sound a bell? Ring a bell? Okay, so we probably have a uh, room for uh, time for one more question from Loon. Now is your time to ask because uh, uh, this is a very privileged. Yes, uh, Mary, Mom, Mary Grace. Yes, please unmute yourself and let me find you, so I can uh, I can pin you. Yes, you are acknowledged, Mom. Dr. Ramada. Hello. Hello, Mom. Yes, please go ahead. You are. Uh... Uh, thank you, Mom Vera. Thank you, Professor Manilios. Um, I would just like to share or to disseminate the information which I got from a group of cultural mappers in our own hometown headed by uh, Sir Raymond Real regarding the exact number of steps of the Hinangangan Professor Romanilios. So uh, based on the result of their um, survey, the total is 212 steps. And then um, here's the breakdown. From Mutunorte, first flight, 33 steps. 
second flight 55 steps third flight 56 steps fourth flight 30 steps then fifth flight leading to back of church 38 steps so a total of 212 steps uh because commonly uh the they are excluding the motonorte down to na po the 38 steps so mo to nga 174 ra usual nga kanang gi butang sa book professor romanilios so this information i would like to acknowledge also um the source of this info from our um, cultural officer sir raymond uh -uh. your Hi, friend Hi, 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 Hi. <laughs> okay uh can uh, sir mario of the on south please mute your microphone please thank you okay prof uh, yes. I would like to add if these 212 steps were restored after the earthquake or before the earthquake, the 212 now. I guess, Prof, um, this is after the earthquake already since um, this is the recent result. So maybe this year, uh, this result is uh, from the recent survey, a cultural mapping done. So, nag increase siya, Prof. <laughs> so, so, another uh, another suggestion. Uh, do you already have a loan historical society or association or cultural office? Because it's good to have for your office the old pictures of loan, the old church, and the old structures there, the was towers, as well as the for 12 pages of causas notables for to be displayed in your future museum, in your future cultural museum to be built by the National Museum with the help of the National Museum and with the help of the provincial government as well as the National Historical Institute. Thank you. That's a good idea, something to look forward to for for Loon. So uh, uh, the first town right now, maybe we are going to other towns as well. There's a message here and I'd like to read this uh, as uh, the, the last, uh, not a statement, but uh, not a question, but a statement from uh, the HNU uh, Center for Boholano Studies. Mam Ma Sara Bosing said, Mam Ma Rara said, for the preservation of historical manuscripts, Please share specific steps to do better yet. Let us have a webinar exclusively for this. I am considering this for CBS of HNU or the Center for Boholano Studies. Gardi has copies of Prof. Romanilio's manuscripts. In fact, providing us photocopies during the Hugos project in 2017. So um, thank you very much. Um, if there are no... Uh, Additional questions, those that would not like to leave it at another time. One more, one last. Member, I think Otherwise, there's a question. There's a uh, question there in the chat box, member. Okay, can uh, can uh, you read it? Uh, 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 there is uh, from Sir Wilson of Loan. Okay, from Sir Wilson. Uh, is there any way to know what motivated Father Jose Garcia to build the biggest church of Bohol? Is the population of Bohol at that time a factor to consider? Uh, that's from uh, uh, Loon, Sir Wilson. Prof uh, or Father Kilatan? You're still on mute, Father, or Prof. Okay. May I give you the May I give you the the way why our churches are big and grandiose because it is our in our old constitution the forma de vivir the way of life we were given a very important instruction that the house of God should be spacious and beautiful and clean to reflect our love for God and the people who dwell 
in the church. So that is a very important we might say, legislation we have, no? that all our churches should be spacious, clean, and majestic no? to honor and glorify God. And it reflects of how the, the worshipers no? No, relate with God. So these are the things that we have to take in, into consideration of how the Recoleto churches are spacious and majestic. Moreover, there are laws in the in, in, in the in the Indies, in the colonial Philippines, that the church, the the the, 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 the dimension, should also reflect the economic and population of the town. So that's also these are what we we call the legislation at that time, which is also respected by the recoletos. So if the church is big. In other words, it reflects that the population is was getting bigger and you need a spacious church for that. And the economy of the town was improving. That's why, why the church was built that big, that grandiose, that majestic during the time. No? So these are the factors to be considered. No? The, 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 bish, the, the bishop and the governor general would not account the parish priest if the church no, would not it would not be would not would not be uh, would not be able to be uh, um, uh, supported by the population and the economy of the town. So I'll give the the floor to Professor for additional information. Uh, the Church of Doan yeah. was very special. First of all, because the former church, the primitive stone church of Loan built in 1770s or 1780 is collapsed. It wasn't burned to the ground. It could just collapse. And that's why when the, uh, there was no church when Father Jose Garcia de la Virgen de los Remedios in Loan when he took over. So he had to build a church in 1855 or 1854 when he was there. Uh, and I would like to insist, and according to Father Felix Gillian, that the people of Loon voluntarily, they were not forced to build a bigger church in Loon because there was no church, no, the collapse on Una. And then very funny, Father Felix Gillian noted that when the, the new church was built in 1566, 68, and 1868, the post-19 by 1866, the people of Loan, during religious functions, during liturgical rites, were all standing by the door. Tindog sila sa pultahan. Hadlok sila ba sing mo collapse na pod? Wa may salik sa ilang himong simbahan. So anyway, the people of Loon were not forced, were not castigated, were not uh, constrained to bring stones, to bring rocks, to bring one ganta of 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 buhangin, one ganta of bas, balas nagikan sa dagat. They were motivated, pero si Cecilio Potong in his book, and of course carried by the historian Visita Iglesia Bohol, not carried, uh, relayed or echoed by the historian, the author of Visita Iglesia Bohol, will not mention the name, uh, said that the people of Loon kuno, were ginalatos, ginalati ko, hala, dala mo guan, usaka, usaka ganta nga bas, hala, dala mo bato, dala mo kung saan yung mga pebbles, wala po, wala nangyari yung ganun. They were motivated by the parish priest, telling them nga, kaning simbahan nga atong itukod, di liman tagamandawe ang mukuan dire, ilubong, di man nagamandawe ang musimba dire, di liman tagaargaw ang mo mo pabunyag dire, di liman taga uh, uslob ang mo pa pero dagat taga uslob na sa loon nun ano, na nangyaw sa una di liman sila mo ano dire aron magpa kumpil, may pakasal di li, kamo may mo gamit anong simbahan, you are going to use this church 
So we have to help this church build this church. We have to make it a beautiful church, the best we can we can offer to God and to the people of God here. So motivation. Dili to know tong gisulti ni Potong na latos ko no. I was also asked last question in Maribuok. The same question. Eh, si Potong daw. Ay, amiga naman ako ang anak ni Potong. Eh, Herman. Ay, si Bambina. So, please, do not repeat the same mistakes. Some people of UP cannot accept that na the, the Recoletos motivated the ano. When the the priest in Kabadbaran, or with the priest in the parish units in Kabadbaran, were looking for uh, parish priests after the revolution. Itong kwento ni, ano, not kwento, ito yung historical data given by Bishop Juan de Dios Pueblos. Juan de Dios Pueblos. So, patay na. I told me, a prof, uh, during after the revolution when the people of Kabadbaran were asking for a priest, Padalaan sila ko sa kapare nga dili rekuleto. Wa nila daw ata. Nga man. Kaya because kilala na nila mga rekuleto. How the rekuletos help. Especially in the livelihood, in hakna, especially in the making of churches. They motivate the people na this church is going to be your church. Not the church of Santander. People of Sane, of Adyan. This church is going to be used by you and your children, and your children's children. Thank you.